kind of balance we got on this baby. $1,243. Sparky, I could kiss you. I can buy six guns with this. I, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not buying purchasing firearms. I gotta go. Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're hopping into the dark cyberpunk future that is Dreamweb. This is a Johnny Mnemonic Shadowrun style cyber adventure. I'm very excited for today. I've never heard of this game before, ever. So here's the Dreamweb, uh, the namesake of the game itself. Um,. You know, sometimes, like, when you're growing up, maybe you've heard of a game, but you never actually played it, or you, like, have seen the cover box for sale in PC game stores, but you never actually bought it or something like this. I not, I can't picture the cover of this box. I've never heard of it. No idea what it is. I love that this game is about some kind of dream web that's been stable for centuries, and again, there's going to be some, some huge cyberpunk um, adventure going on here, but now evil is about to take control. I'm very, very excited. Uh, this game looks like a game I would have loved to play as a kid, and I, frankly, I blame my parents for, for not introducing me to this game. Um, Keepers, the web of the dream portal is slowly collapsing. As I would have said, the seven evil powers of Earth are joining forces. If they become too strong, the dream web will be destroyed. Can't let that happen, can we? Who will be the deliverer? When will it be? These are all the sacred monks charged with protecting the dream portal. We must not let the web be broken. Or the dream web. Sorry, it's not a portal. Silence! Chosen ones are becoming... Okay, I, I'm not reading this fast enough. If they discover the powers, they will become too strong. Um, who... Uh, has the seed been planted? Etc, etc. I kind of want to skip this and get to the game, but I'm worried I'm going to miss something important. Um, I haven't decided how far we're going to play in this game uh, yet. I'm just going to... We're going to fly by the seat of our pants. Maybe we'll beat the whole game. Maybe we'll just get far enough and experience the joy of playing some Dreamweb. I haven't decided. I haven't fully decided. Um, we will see as we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, magic powers have come out of a locker and they're searching a room. Guess who they're going to find? They're going to find me. There's me and my girlfriend sleeping in our cyber... Oh, it just beamed me up. Okay, I got I got sucked up by a glowing orb. Um, this is the future. The future has been utterly destroyed. I know what you want from me. I think I understand now. The seven are becoming stronger. This is like me having a nightmare. Only I've actually been teleported there. They have haunted my dreams. I know they control the seven points of a, the dream web. Imagine if in real life when you had a nightmare, you, had, you were actually being teleported to a parallel universe to like live that out. And then at the end, you'd always be teleported back into your bed. But imagine dreams were not just in our minds. Imagine we physically, when we fell asleep, were teleported to another dimension and just lived a few hours there before teleporting back. That would simultaneously be badass and terrifying. Um, how will I find him? He is very near. Uh, arm yourself and begin your search. Who are we? Uh, who are we looking for? Time is running out, my brother. I guess we will find out. Um, I have some notes that I downloaded from the internet to help us here because this is an adventure game. And for anyone who played adventure games in the 90s, you know they're not as... Uh, I don't want to say on rails, uh, but they're not as guided as modern adventure games. I feel like modern adventure games really sort of set the player up to eventually uh, succeed. But adventure games in the 90s, they were designed such that if you didn't pick up the coffee cup on the first screen, you couldn't pass the final boss. You know, something really arbitrary that you miss early on could screw you for the rest of the game. Anyway, we have to insert disc two here, so let's go ahead and do that. Yes, this game comes from back in the day when you would get a game on like four or five floppy disks and you'd have to swap the disks as you play. Sometimes you could install them on the hard drive. I don't know if you could on Amigas or not. I'm much more familiar with 
Uh, PC gaming, of course. I did not own an Amiga. Uh, I just had a, a DOS computer. Oh my god, here we go. So here's the interesting thing, is as you move the mouse cursor around, notice so I have like a zoomed in area on the left so I can like see what I'm looking at. There's a monitor, there's my girlfriend, all sorts of stuff. Also, uh, listen to that atmospheric music in the back. That is so awesome. Just this, this, take a screenshot of this. I wanted every game to be like this when I was a kid. I was talking to my girlfriend, see what she has to say. Your girlfriend Eden lies in bed with her eyes half closed and the covers pulled up tightly around her. Her dark hair spills out over the pillows. She has uh, a slight frown on her face. Why are you sad, baby? Eden opens her eyes slightly and gives you a smile. Concern shows in her eyes. Eden, I feel terrible. You feel so hot. Your skin is soaking wet. You were dreaming again last night, and it scares me when you shout out so loud. I thought the dreams had gone away, but last night was worse than, I, than ever, and I don't think it's just the bad dreams. What do you mean, not just dreams? It all seems so real and so vivid. My mind is telling me to do things that I don't want to do. Ugh. You have to stop thinking like this. You need to see a doctor. I'm so worried about you. Uh, it'll be okay. I just need some time to sort some things out in my mind look it's late you better get to work or sparky will be mad with you now we'll talk more when you get back all right be will you be here when i get back of course i will um all right so we have a very supportive girlfriend walk to book let's check this out examine the book on the bedside table is a book of eden's uh she never really got uh on with reading books on the network machine, there is a bookmark inside on her page. Use her book. You read the title and it says Mortal Mask. Okay. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this game is that you can interact with almost everything in the environment and you can pick up almost everything or, or many, many, many things. The other interesting part is that most of the things you can pick up in this game serve absolutely no purpose. And one of the criticisms of this game was the fact that you could pick up stuff like this CD box. You could put it into your inventory um, and it just served no purpose. So I don't think we need the CD box. I'm going to go ahead and drop it. Oh, no, I can't. I'll put it in my inventory. Now can I drop it? There we go. I threw it in the trash. <laughs> I just took her CDs and threw it. Oh, no, it's just on the ground there. Okay. Uh, wait. The CD player. Use it. Reach out and press a few buttons. Okay. Anyway, we turned on. We put a CD on for our girlfriend who's uh, asleep there. Let's go over to this console. Let's hack the Matrix, guys. Examine the console. A flat plastic computer console used by Eden. Uh, it is used as a word processor and entirely voice activated. Let's use it. I shouldn't mess with Eden's stuff. All right. Well, he... <laughs> that That is good boyfriend advice, fellas. Don't mess with stuff that is not yours. All right, here's what we want. We want the lighter. Or, sorry, the wallet. Um, we want to take, pick up our wallet, put that in our pocket. And is there a way to examine this? Open our wallet. Wait, take the wallet, open it. Okay, I, I don't know what's happening here. Oh, this stuff came into our inventory from our wallet. Oh, okay. Take the cash card, take the photo. Oh, contents of wallet, I see. So we want the cash card. What is this? The list. I want the list too. Here, we'll take all this stuff, the list and the photo. Now we can actually drop our wallet because it's kind of unnecessary. But let's see here. The list, a crumpled piece of paper that has barely legible uh, door lock numbers that belong to people that you don't even know anymore. Okay, use the list. Examine the list, you see your own number that you've written uh, so that you don't need to forget. The number is 5106. Is that like my door code for getting in and out of my cyberpunk apartment? Okay, we need that. Is there anything else we need in this room? Not really. All right, let's go to work so uh, Sparky doesn't get mad at us. Um, I think there's some stuff we have to do in here, though. There is this cartridge that we have to pick up. Like, you would never know this if you were just playing this for the first time. You'd just totally be exploring this game. Um, 
And this is a standard network cartridge, has Eden's familiar handwriting, and it says client information, uh, Sartain Industries. We're gonna go ahead and steal that, steal her work, her work documents. Can we use this? Cartridge must be placed inside a network interface. Hey, I know where there's one of those. Um, oh, there's an interface right there. So let's use this interface. It's not connected. Maybe you should use one in, wait, wait, what did that say? At your apartment. Oh, I'm in her apartment right now. Totally in her apartment. And here's the micro cooker. This is the sci-fi's version of a microwave. Completely burnt out. The door hangs limply off one hinge. Man, this apartment is in shambles. Uh, but inside, we have a key. She's hiding keys in her busted microwaves. That is some paranoid stuff, man. If you ever date a girl who's hiding keys inside broken kitchen appliances, I might have a few questions. I might have a few questions. All right. So anything else we need to do here? Got the micro, open the microwave, got, grab the key. Uh, I think that's about it. Let's bail. Examine the door. The lift doors are covered with a green material that vaguely matches the furnishings. I like to think that somebody had to write something for this. Like, it's just the door to exit the apartment, but some programmer out there had to basically go in and write up a description of a door. The doors are controlled automatically by the lift. Okay. How do we summon the lift? Examine the button. Uh, a square metal plate on the wall has a small button. Okay, this is the uh, lift button. So opens the doors and off we go we figured out how to exit the apartment first puzzle solved now what do we got here anything examine door wait how do how do we how do we leave oh there we go to control there we go examine the control use the controls uh, you press the down button because I'm smart down we go it is cool how, like, the whole game, it's like every environment you go in is, like, in this one little squared area of the screen. All right, let's see what we have. I'm just so excited to see, like, what the next screen will be. Oh, we're in, an, uh, in a, a garage here. Oh, look, a screwdriver. We're going to take that. Pick up the screwdriver. Go ahead. A large, flat, bladed screwdriver with a translucent handle. I feel like some of these descriptions we're just going to skip. We, we got a screwdriver. <laughs> or did we? Wait. Pick it up. There we go. I went to use it. All right, there we go. Uh, now let's go ahead. She has some car troubles. Can we use her car? You would have to fix the car. You don't have the first idea. All right, so we're not a mechanic. Can we just leave? Uh, the garage door is a thick industrial door that spans the doorway about 10 feet. The door is probably controlled using a remote control. Okay. Hey, let's take the wrench, too. Why not? Strange-looking wrench. We're going to have all the stuff. Now, apparently, your inventory can just store everything. So, wait. We have a left and a right shoe. Wait, we have... Are we not wearing our clothes? Are we not wearing our clothes? You are wearing them already. Oh, okay. I thought I, t I thought I was walking around naked with like my clothes in a backpack. Okay, we have to find the remote control that opens. Oh no, wait, here's a door. Here's a door, there we go. We have to find our way out of this garage. All right, where are we now? The drain. All right, I think we have to try and find our apartment. So, well, I guess that's the only way we can go. Off we go. Man, this game has so much cyberpunk atmosphere. It's interesting when you think about like the best cyberpunk games. Oh, there we go. Uh, because they basically always take place at night. They always have very sort of uh, electric guitar, but slow paced sort of action or atmospheric music. There's always somebody in a trench coat and there's always a lot of computer hacking or like cybernetics. You know, that's that's the epitome um, of of cyberpunk. Uh, and it works. It works. I don't know. Like, if, if you did a cyberpunk game that took place entirely during the day, it almost wouldn't be cyberpunk, I think. Walk to the light. We can go in the air ducts if we want. Can we examine the air ducts? Let's use the air ducts. The duct appears to have no real use. Except crawling in it and sneaking around like a, like a John McClane badass. 
Okay, where, where's our door? There's our door. Walk to the keypad. Okay, examine the keypad. What was, what was our entry code? On the wall you see a small grubby keypad next to your neighbor's door. Above the ground, uh, a group of keys. You see the name Ted Kingston. Okay, so that is not our door. Is it this one? This one. Examine the switch. Pressing the switch will ring the doorbell to your flat inside. You press the switch and the red light illuminates briefly. You wait for a while and realize that you are not in. Perhaps you are out somewhere. Wait, I rang my own doorbell? Wait, can we ring Ted's doorbell? Oh, those are doorbells. Okay. Let's talk to Ted. Nothing happens. I guess Ted's not home either. All right, let's enter our keypad. Uh, the door entry, if you can remember the number. Okay, what was the number? Five... 106, I think. 106. Bloop. Did that work? Access granted. Welcome home, Ryan. My character's name is Ryan, by the way. All right, my apartment is super messy. Oh my god, I just have food on my bed. Pillow. Okay, a cartridge. Network card. Maybe that's what I want. There's some stuff that I want here. A colored cartridge for the network machine. Most likely, most like one of the ones. Okay, let's take it. Let's uh, go ahead and store that. What else we got here? A network card. I feel like that could be of some use. Small red plastic card about an eighth of an inch thick. This card contains data that can be read by all computer networks. I will take that too. Anything else in here? Compact disc player. I like how they thought that CDs were the future of media. I mean, they kind of were briefly. Just didn't last very long. Okay, we can also get a knife, which apparently we're going to need. So one of the things in this game is that it actually has relatively simple logical puzzles, all things considered. Um, and that was actually one of the criticisms some of uh, the reviewers gave this game back in the day. I'm looking for another... What is that, an onk? Huh. You notice the word Eden etched into it. Cool. Uh, wait, for my inventory... Did any of these say important? I'm looking for a cartridge that says important. Uh, like most of the ones, this one has no label. Okay, uh... Hold on. Inventory. This one... It data... You've forgotten to label it. Okay, I'm looking for one. This is important. But anyway, one of the criticisms that uh, people gave to this game back in the day is that, here it is, is that uh, so a lot of the puzzles can be solved by just killing people. So relatively simple puzzle solving revolving around murder. Uh, all right, let's uh, use this. Find a network interface. Uh, how do we do this? Okay, I want to use... Here's the network interface. Open. Uh, here we go. Take that cartridge, put it in. And go. Okay, exit. Now go to the interface. Use. Place the cartridge. It is, it is in. Contents of interface is in. How do we how do we actually turn this on? Use. Place a cartridge, then use the monitor. Okay. So where I guess it's the network screen. Use. There we go. We successfully figured out how to use a computer. The game is actually pretty intuitive, the interface. Um I mean it's not like a Sierra adventure or anything like that. It's way more point and clicky. Um it's not even like a LucasArts adventure game, really. Uh, but I, I dig it. it. It's it's its own thing. I don't know. Anyway, Lek Corp. Personal network system. Waiting for signal. Link complete. All right, let's do some computer hacking here, guys. Boop, 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 boop. Files available. Bank it. Bank net. Mailbox. News net. Cartridge. Let's type in... Bank... Net. Unrecognized command. Oh god. I, I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the commands that you need uh, would have been in the manual, which is actually totally awesome. 
There's a hacking scene in a game. This is so cool. Enter the password for this key. Um, apparently, this was originally part of the copy protection. Um, so, in theory, I either have to go to find a manual or maybe this version of the game, no matter what you enter, will accept it. What would be a password this guy would use? How about Dark Phoenix? Incorrect password. Okay, we gotta we gotta go look up the copy protection. I actually I'm not sad about this because I also want to look up what other commands I can do in this uh, little hacking terminal. Your guide to the dream web. In your dreams, you travel to the dream web. Everyone does. The plane of subconsciousness affects your everyday life. It controls the very heart of civilization itself. That's cool. It's sort of like the Matrix. It's sort of like the dream version of the Matrix. Okay, these are installation instructions. I guess I'm looking at the DOS manual. Hopefully the copy protection is the same as the Amiga version of the game, which I'm actually playing. Oh, here we go. The Diary of a Mad Man? Ryan's diary contains important information you will need during the game. On the final page, Ryan has noted down some things to remember. We strongly advise you to read the diary fully before entering the dream web. So we probably should go look for that diary. It might have that might have the the password that he needs. Um, okay, here's stuff on the game interface. We kind of figured that out ourselves. Oh, here we go. Here are some network commands: list, read, log on, keys, help, and exit. Yeah, that's not too bad. I wonder if you dial these numbers these days, who you would get, because you're definitely not going to get their tech support. The company that made this game actually released this game totally as freeware in 2012, so you can actually go download this game completely for free uh, from the Scum VM uh, emulator site. That's an emulator for adventure games. And yeah, I mean, I, I could be playing that version, I suppose. It probably doesn't have this password thing, but I like going for the real original OG feel, guys. That's why I'm playing it on an Amiga. Anyway, we've got some blank pages here and the back of the manual. What's the password? Okay, I tried looking this up. Apparently Black Dragon might be the password. Actually, if that is the password, my guess of Dark Phoenix was a pretty good guess, right? Let's see if this works. Ah, there we go. New key granted list. Let's see if we can read some of these things. Read uh, bank net. Reading, accessing. This file name is not known. Oh, okay. How about we try this? List bank net. Topics in this file. Ah, list balance. This file name is not known. How about read balance? Is that going to work? Account identity, Ryan. Balance. I am, wait, wait, wait. 654 credits overdrawn? Oh, that's not good. Okay, let's for, forget about that. <laughs> How about we, uh, let's look at this cartridge that we inserted, see what we actually got on there. This file name is not known. Wait, what? List. Files available. It's weird that like, so like if I try and like read mailbox, it's probably gonna say, it can't read it right now. But if I list the mailbox, then it will show me things I can read. Like I can read stuff from Sparky's and Karma and ChemoClean. Uh, I, I mean this game, so, you know, we're playing this game here today. We're kind of on a guided path. I have notes that are kind of guiding me in where to go. If you truly want to experience this game, I mean, you could be reading all this background and so on. Um, and there's a lot here. So, I mean, you know, even if you watch me play this game, again, I don't know how far I'm going to get. Uh, but there would be a lot to come back and experience if you wanted to take a much slower pace than me. I mean, I feel like I'm not rushing through this game, but I'm also not exploring every nook and cranny. So, let's read the cartridge. File name, okay, list. Am I spelling it wrong? Oh, wait, wait I, I did. I can't type. Cartridge. Cartridge. That's what I, how I was spelling it. Okay, list. Cartridge. Jeez, are we going to get to the stuff on this thing or not? <laughs> private. Okay, read. Rad. Read. Priat. Jeez, can I not type? Read private. Things to remember. New shifts at work, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. 
Door numbers again. Lewis is 5238. Eden is 2865. Van can be picked up anytime after the 15th. Estimate about 2400. Must ask Sparky for loan. All right, we have hacked. We have hacked sufficiently. All right, let's see what's uh, going on down in here. Uh, so here's my kitchen. I have a working refrigerator and a multi-cooker and all sorts of stuff. Let's see what's going on in the back of my apartment here. Oh, we got a bathroom and everything too. A jukebox and an ashtray in the bathroom right next to my toilet, my shower, and my basin. Is this like a sink? Um, apparently this game takes place in a futuristic UK calls elevators lifts and stuff like that so maybe like a basin is just like a uk word for a sink um what is that a coke can is this game sponsored by coca-cola wow how do they get how do they get away with inserting that in the game pretty sure that's just straight up trash that we don't need okay uh is there anything else that we need to do in here don't know let's try leaving um, walk to the lift controls. Use them. Wait, where are we? You press them, the lobby begins to move. Wait, did I come in an elevator here? I don't fully remember. All right, we're gonna go to Lewis's flat. We still haven't gone to work. Eden was so worried about us leaving on time so that we could uh, go to work, but um, is there a way to return to map? What does that do? Okay, so this is a map. So there's no way to get like an overview map of the world that we're in. Okay, so we're gonna go to Lewis's flat. We got some business with old Lewis. Plus we also have the key to get into his apartment. We have his door code, so. Uh, at the very least we can go and scrounge some materials out of his apartment, some materials that may be helpful to adventurers like us. All right, here we are. Walk to the tiled floor. All right, let's, let's do it. It seems to be the only place to actually go. Oh, there's a guy with a laser whip. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, he whipped us. He whipped us good. Oh, what's happening? What? what? He took our shoes. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Wait, I had like a wallet. I had money. He didn't take the cash card or anything. That was an elaborate ploy. Just, Lewis stole my shoes. Lewis, you bastard. I can't believe it. They mugged me from my trainers. My trainers. That is such like a 90s way of describing your shoes. All right, I'm I'm barefoot. I've I've never seen that in an adventure game. Of all the things, I had a watch. I had gum. I had cool shades. I had a wallet. I should put these on, speaking of. How do I do that? There we go. No, that doesn't work. Uh, use them. Oh, yeah. Why was I not wearing these from the beginning? Can I take this off? Hold on. Go in here. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why, but I'm just like, can I Can I just drop my shirt? You can't drop a worn item. Okay, so I have to take it off somehow. I have a ring that I'm wearing too, a cash card. These guys, the, the guy liked my shoes so much, he pulled out a plasma whip and beat me and took my shoes. All right, which way to go? I have no idea where this guy's apartment is. A carton. There's a burger on the floor. Wait, hold on. There's a hamburger over there. There's a piece of wire. Uh, disgusting cold burger that has been half eaten. Oh, okay, I'm not interested. Automatic doors. The doors are locked and can't be opened. Okay. I suspect those are automatic as, as well. So I guess we're going down here. Uh, walk to the door. Uh, Lewis's doorbell. This doorbell has a small sign taped that says out of order. Okay, so let's, I think we know his, his key code. Um, what was, wait, 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 what was his code again? Okay, it was five, two, three, eight. Boop, boop, boop. Access granted. All right, Lewis, I'm coming in. Fix your doorbell, buddy. Um, a rubbish chute, a guitar. Does he have shoes? Food tray, food tray, a mug, a micro cooker, interface. Looks like he has like a little gaming system hooked up here. Like there's his TV and there's like his gaming console. He is in the can right now, so I kind of don't want to bother him. Oh, trainers. Okay, I want those. 
totally stealing your shoes, Lewis. Somebody did this to me. Don't mind me. <laughs> Imagine a friend of yours just showed up at your apartment and he like burst into the bathroom while you were on the toilet and he took your shoes. That is the kind of friend I am to this Lewis guy. So we're going to put these on screen number one. I hope I am the same size shoe as this guy. Uh, use. You slip it over your right foot. I like how you have to put shoes on one at a time. What if I just wear one shoe? Would that be weird? Lewis is one of your oldest friends. <laughs> I hope so. I'm talking to him on the can. He sits slumped on the toilet. He's wearing a hideous green shirt covered in food stains. Oh, God, dude. Take care of yourself. Um, oh, wait. Can I talk to him? Talk. Uh, you give Lewis a shake and he opens his eyes. Hey, Ryan, how are you, man? I feel pretty bad. I'll be all right, but I could use some help. Help? What do you mean? I can't help. Look, I'm in deep trouble and there are some things I need and I think you can uh, get them for me. Sure, what are you looking for? Drugs? Not today. I need a gun. Oh, God, and I don't know anyone who has one. Well, there's this dealer I know. He's into heavy stuff like that. Weapons and shit. It'll cost you. Just tell me what to do, Lewis. What do you need a gun for anyway? I can't explain. It's all too complicated. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. I, I'm not even sure why you need a gun, dude. If you're serious then, I'll go to a pool by the hall by the river. There's a guy called Silverman. Where's this pool hall? Uh, you'll find my membership card in the place. Uh, okay. I won't forget this. No problem, man. All right. So we'll just leave him to carry on with his business and now we need to find his membership card or wallet where would that be everyone has a cd player right there that looks like could be it that looks promising oh i should put on the other shoe it's kind of stupid to only wear one i've decided uh use the shoe you slip it over your left foot all right we now have double shoe it's double shoe power Something written on it, almost scrubbed out. Um, all right. Where is this thing? Walk to unit. Ah, uh, here we go. Um, oh, there we go. We got a card. Just gonna take this. He said I could take it, remember? We're not stealing. The Pool Club, M1202. This is the card Lewis has for the pool hall. I wish we all carried around microchip-style cards to access places. Like, we're living in the year, like, 2020, guys. We should be... The world needs to be more futuristic and cyberpunky. It should be night all the time. There should be cool electronic guitar, atmospheric music in the background. We should all be issued government-issued trench coats. And uh, the only part of the future that came true is corporations own us. <laughs> like... Google, Facebook, Instagram, they all, they, they own us. They, no information is personal anymore, private. It's all been, we've been sold and commoditized. But uh, we have the, that, the bad part of the future, corporations own us. We don't have any of the good parts, like a, a cyber neural linked matrix or anything cool, you know? You know, let's pop in here. Okay, you know why I need a gun? So that people can't steal my shoes. Let's go talk to this guy and see if he can help us. A sign. What does the sign say? Examine the sign. Fixed uh, to the booth is a sign. What does it say? The sign says memberships and information. Why wasn't that? Like, I like how there's description of the sign, and then you can use the sign to actually read it. Why not just tell me what the sign says? It's, a, it's like one extra step that's unnecessary. Now let's talk to this guy. Look, I'm sorry, pal. If you're after a new membership, uh, I can't issue any till next week. Actually, I've got a friend's card here. You can use someone else's card if you like. If it's okay with them, it's okay by me. Won't the electronic thumbprint on the card be wrong? Look, I shouldn't be doing this, but if you use your card in the reader by the doors, I'll sort out the rest. Yeah, thanks, I'll do that. Man, loose? They're running a loose operation here at the uh, gun purchasing pool hall. Um, all right, so let's go in, walk to the reader. The controls are a little bit clunky, I will say. Um, but I've, I've experienced worse. 
Uh, you slide the membership card into the reader and the doors open. Like, actually, okay, that was, that was actually pretty painless. Like, the controls aren't bad. I can figure out what I need to do uh, most of the time to get what I want to happen, but uh, it's getting two objects to interact is sometimes a little clunky. Or, like, moving objects in and out of your inventory is a little clunky, too. Um, anyway. On to the next level. So here we're going to want to try to buy a gun. We are like $600 in debt though, so hopefully we can buy this thing on credit because we ain't got no cash. Um, all right. With a shutter, the lift takes you down to the pool hall. Well, let's see what we got going on here. Walk to man. Walk to other man. Walk to bartender. I feel like this is the guy who's going to sell us the gun, but let's just sort of explore this area a little bit here. What do we got in here? Pool! Guys are playing pool. What else is in here? It's a pretty cool, shady little dingy basement. Actually, no one's playing pool. I misspoke. Oh, is this the exit? What is this? Okay, who should we talk to? I guess let's uh, start with the bartender, because if anyone's going to know anything about guns, it's going to be that guy. All right, Mr. Bartender. Tell us where we can get some guns. Bartender stands behind the bar, lazily smoking a cigarette. What can I get for you? I've been told I can get some help here. Oh yeah? By who? By my friend, Lewis. Lewis King. Lewis King, yeah, I've seen him around here a few times. What exactly are you looking for? I need a gun. I mean, I don't know much about them, but I need one. Well, Mr. Silverman deals with all that. You'll need to see him in his office. The number is 5222. Man, security is lax in this world. I'll ring through and tell him you're on your way. All right, thanks. Okay, so I guess that door at the very back was Mr. Silverman. So, uh, oh, oh, can we talk to these guys? I wonder what man has to say. Hello, man. Man lies slumped across the table like most people here. He's wearing jeans and a shirt. The man doesn't make a move as you approach. This is an NPC. You cannot talk to him. He's just... All these guys are passed out on the table. Not the most reputable establishment. All right. 5222 was the code, right? You guys remember that. Like me, right? Use. I like how I just to load the keypad. 5222. Enter. Access granted. I have to add that little sound effect because there's so much load time. <laughs> Just to enter a keypad, there's two load screens. Oh man, we're in Mr. Big's office. All right, we're gonna have to talk our way into him selling us a gun. Look, he's like smoking a cigar there. The pool hall owner sits behind his desk and puffs a, uh, puffs a large cigar. He wears an off-white shirt and blue waistcoat. Blah, blah, blah. Good evening, my name is Silverman. What's yours? My name is Ryan, I need your help. Lewis King is a friend of mine. Your friend Lewis was right. I can usually help people out, providing they have enough money. Oh, I have money. I just hope I have enough. Uh, and you after some kind of handgun? Yeah, something that's easy to use. I've never used a gun before. Please, Ryan, don't tell me any more than I need to know. I can supply you with a gun. What you do with it is up to you. 200, I can give you an SO, an SI-140, a pulse laser gun. Sweet, a child could use it. It'll be fine, thanks. If you'd like to put the cash card through the scanner, I'll detect the money. Okay. Uh, give Lewis my regards. Okay. Well done. So now we go into our inventory. Take out our cash card. Use the cash card. Um, cash card shows a balance of zero. Oh. Uh, I feel like he's not going to sell us the gun. Hold on. The card scanner. Use the card scanner with my cash card. You examine the card and realize you do not have enough money. I don't like time wasters. Come back when you can afford my services. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I guess we jumped the gun there. Uh, we need money. We need to sell some drugs or something like that. It's the cyberpunk future after all. What was your guys' favorite, like, cyberpunk world? Like, movie, TV show, game? Um, I think, like, Shadowrun is definitely up there for me. Even though, like, really I only ever played the Super Nintendo RPG of Shadowrun uh, back in the day. Uh, but, like, I know there was, like, an RPG. And I did read a couple of the books 
when I was a kid, the, like, novels, the, like, cheap novelizations of adventures in the world. Um, trying to think of what else is cyberpunk. Like, Johnny Mnemonic is a classic movie. The Matrix, of course. Uh, Blade Runner. Um, Altered Carbon was a really cool cyberpunk thing that came out on Netflix uh, a couple of years ago. Um, also, you know what? Have you guys ever seen Mr. Robot? That show always kind of reminds me of uh, sort of a... Oh, maybe we can get paid at Sparky's. Maybe we should actually finally go to work. Um, but yes, Mr. Robot. It's set in contemporary times. It's totally not necessarily traditional cyberpunk, but it feels cyberpunky to me because it is sort of so hacky. Like, it's all about hacks and hacking and stuff. And it's a really realistic depiction of hacking, too. Look at this bum over here. This worthless bum. Um, in the pouring rain, geez. But anyway, yes, uh, so, yeah, Mr. Robot, it feels almost like it could be cyberpunk, and it definitely has the musical soundtrack of, like, a cyberpunk thing. So, uh, oh, there's Sparky. So, yeah, I mean, those are the cyberpunk things that come to mind for me. But, yeah, what are your guys, some of your favorite, like, cyberpunk adventures or games or movies or stories or whatnot? I'd uh, be curious to know. Maybe there's like a cool one that I missed out on all these years, just like this. Sparky stood behind the bar. All right, Sparky. Hey, Ryan, did you get my mailnet message? No, sorry. I mean, sorry I'm late. That's okay. No problem at all. Really? Well, yeah, you're fired. If you'd bother to read the message, you would know by now. You can't do that. I really need the money. Sorry, Ryan. I can't use unreliable staff. Look, I'm sorry I've been uh, having problems sleeping. I'll tell you what I'll do. Take a couple weeks off and try and sort yourself out. You aren't any good to me like this. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Do you think I could have my wages? Well, I guess so. Even though I ended up having to work behind the bar myself, just run your card through the scanner. Wow. What a forgiving boss. I didn't show up to work. I almost got fired. And instead, he gave me time off, and he's paying me money. I want to work for this guy. Use... Oh, this is how we're getting money. Take your card, place it in the metal strip. Sparky comes over, types something into the scanner. And we got our cash, just like that, people. Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, use our card. What kind of balance we got on this baby? $1,243, Sparky. I could kiss you. I can buy six guns with this. I, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not buying purchasing firearms. I got to go. <laughs> Wait, is there anything else we need to do in there? Oh, let's go back in for just one second here. What's in this back room? I got I got the money and ran before he changed his mind. But like, what do we got going on in this back room? Oh, it's just a bathroom. There's no shoes in here, are there? That was so weird when I got my my shoes stolen. Let's talk to this guy. Talk to man. A large man who's smoking a cigarette. The man takes a puff of his cigarette and asks you, what's up? What's up? Mind if I sit next to you? Do what you like. I don't care. Thanks. What's on TV? It's a program about that singer, David Crane. What about him? He's playing some concert. Okay, this is just gobbledygook dialogue, filling stuff up. What is this anyway? Why all the questions? No, no reason. The reasons... The Regency is that that big place near the bridge, isn't it? Or yeah, why, why don't you shut up and leave me alone? All right, we annoyed a bar patron. Look, this guy's like playing an arcade game, video vid game player. Oh my god, can we play a video game? The video game players wrestling furiously with the controls in the arcade machine ignores your approach. How's it going? Look, I'm trying to concentrate. Just leave me alone. Your name's Steve, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Now, could you just leave me alone? I guess I should be going anyway. See you later. How did I know his name? It's odd. I want to play that game. I want there to be a mini game. A machine. I like how one of the things in the bar was just called machine. Generic cyberpunk machine. All right, let's uh, get out of here. We got our money. Let's go buy some guns. You know what? Let's go back. We'll buy some guns. We'll ask them to throw some drugs in for free. Or not for free. We have money. We'll buy it. Drugs, guns, women, what else can we buy that's illicit? Uh, enriched uranium? Anything that's illegal, I'm in the market. I just got paid today, my good sir. Give me all your illegal wares. Give me uh, bootleg um, Gucci purses too, if you got them. 
I will take those as well. Anything illegal, I'm I'm totally up for buying right now. Um, use this. All right, beep, beep, boop, boop. Okay, we're going down. Okay, once we have a gun, so why are we trying to get a gun? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. But I mean, I guess we need it for for something, right? I don't know. Um, this game, by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it uh, it had a swear in it. It had the word shit. So um, that's not the only thing it had. Apparently, at one point, I don't know if, if all versions of this game got this censored or not. But at one point in this game, you actually see a rock star's uh, penis. That's that's in the game. Um, it had to be censored in Australia so that uh, the game could actually be released. And apparently this game has a full frontal nudity scene in it. So I said before I didn't know how far we're going to get in the game, but my hope is that we at least get that far. I mean, hey, if it's in the game, we're going to play it. We're going to get there. We'll get to the full frontal scene, maybe, probably. So anyway, let's uh, let's focus on what we're trying to do right now, which is purchase guns. Uh, where's our money card? Insert money card into the illegal cash reader. Wait, what? Use the pool owner taps a few numbers and then asks you to swipe your car. The scanner removes 200 units, places them, your gun on the desk. Boom! Got our gun. Let's not drop it into the trash right away. Let's do that. Exit and open your inventory. Take the gun. Okay, how do we how do we equip it? It's the thing. Inventory. Um, oh, I know, I know. Uh, take the gun. Put it in your hand. Put it in your face, your mouth, your your hair. Put it in your coat. Okay. I don't know how we're gonna use this gun, but we have a gun. We are armed, baby. Next time someone tries to steal my shoes, they're gonna get a bullet to the face. Uh, talk about talk about ex escalation. All right, one thing we should probably do is actually save our game here. So before we go any farther, oh, <laughs> we have to insert another disc. To get to the game's menu, you need to insert a disc. How is that, eh? I mean, this definitely takes me back to the days when you had to be swapping discs if you want to, uh, you know, be playing your game here. I love this menu, by the way. Even the menu looks cool. Okay, we'll call this We Got a Gun. This is our save number one. Save the game. We're starting to hit a point where now that we have a weapon, some of the quote unquote puzzles we're going to be engaged in involve killing someone or dying. Uh, and I think the game is still saving. So, because we have the possibility of dying, I want a little uh, safety net for us. Our own, you know, there's a dream web out there. This is our safety web called a save game so if I screw up uh, we're okay all right so um, the only other place we can go at this point is that new place that we just heard about the Regency Hotel yeah there it is because we've been everywhere else so I feel like this game is actually not too bad in terms of uh, you know players getting lost and stuff because it is keeping things fairly constrained. You can't go to too many places. I mean, knowing exactly what you need to do is probably a little confusing, but it's like you could get the uh, cash from your boss. You could get the hint about the gun from your friend uh, Louis, and you could get the gun. So it's like all the main things you can kind of do. Um, I don't know, like we've been doing some other things, but have they been essential to what you know we've been doing here? I'm not too sure. Okay, a girl, a young man. Let's talk to the receptionist and she see what she says. Middle-aged woman with a red dress. Uh, hello, sir. Welcome to the Regency Hotel. How can I help you? I'd like a room for tonight, please. Oh. One other criticism of this game is that you can't direct the conversations. Oh, David Crane, the singer, is here. Suppose he's got all the best rooms. Well, Mr. Crane has the penthouse suite, naturally. There is a vacant suite below that, and it's quite luxurious. How much would a night cost? 830 So I'm, for some reason, getting a room. Um, not being able to direct the conversations can lead to moments like this, where you're like, I guess I want a room. Like, you're not really sure what's going on. But on the flip side, at least the character seems to know. Like, for some reason, this guy knows that we need to, uh, 
We need to get a room. Uh, maybe we're going to rob Mr. David Crane. And that's how we'll get more money. Okay, there's the key card. Look how tiny that is. Okay, we're gonna, totally going to take this. Um, <laughs> last time I saw my girlfriend, she's like, go to work. I'm like, sure. Since then, I've been fired from my job, bought a gun, and I'm checking into a hotel by myself. I, I think to assassinate uh, like, a, like, a, like a singer dude. <laughs> Man, is she gonna be pissed? What is this over here? A table, a leaflet. Okay, uh, walk to the pad. Can I uh, press the button, use it? There we go. Like, I feel like that was a little cumbersome. They could have just uh, taken that part out and as soon as you click on the controls, it like summons the elevator. Like, that's what I mean, I think, by the controls being a little clunky. Anyway, um... Go ahead and use that. You carefully insert the key card into the control box. There's a muted beep as the controls accept your card. All right. And off we go. So I don't quite understand my plan just yet. But again, I have some notes to guide us so that we will always be on track. But uh, what is this? That's the pad. Okay. So which way do we go? We can almost... Well, finally, we can go either way. And let's start with over here. And that's a, do a locked door. What is this? A fire point. Examine. On the wall, you see a bright red box with the word fire stenciled into the box. The box has rounded corners. Let's check it out. An axe. I will take that. I need all the weapons I can get. I'm about to kill a pop singer. I need a gun and an axe. Oh, man. I'm going to kick the door down. I, I should take my shoes back off when I do this. Uh, but I'm gonna kick the door down, be holding an axe in one hand and a gun in the other. That guy's gonna just straight up piss himself. <laughs> It'd be so terrifying. Um, uh, which, which is my, my room, by the way. Walk to the railing. Examine the door lock. Use my key. Boop. Oh, that is my room. I got lucky. One of two, I guess. All right, here's my luxurious room. Not too bad, actually. Um, like how there's ashtrays. I feel like uh, ashtrays are something you just don't see anymore. Like, I guess people still smoke in this world, but, like, damned if I ever see it. Definitely do not see that. Walk up the steps. All right, we have a elevated bathroom, I guess. I don't know what's out here. Paving? Is it like a balcony of some kind? Can I open these doors? Examine doors. Use. It's raining outside. Okay. In some versions of the game, you actually see rain. In fact, that's actually one thing that I regret about playing the original Amiga version here. It's like that in, in later versions of the game, they actually had full uh, actors like speaking all the dialogue and there were more animated effects and stuff. And like, I mean, I debated what version of this game to play. But again, there's something about going back to the OG original version of these games sometimes that I think uh, gives them a level of charm that you just don't see in the in remastered version. So, I mean, you know, the, the updated version, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just wanted to do the original Amiga. So that was sort of my thinking. Um, anyway, okay, I think we can bust our way into this elevator and hack our way up to the penthouse suite, if you can believe it. Okay, so if we go to the controls here, here's what we want to do. Where's our knife? We're going to um, bust open these controls, find something to use it with. Okay, hold on. Inventory. Use this. Find something to use it with. I want to use it with the controls. How do I do this? Use the controls with the knife. There you go. You push the edge of the knife into the small gap between the control box and its front panel. As you push the knife, the panel opens. All right, now let's take a look at this stuff here. Small metal box that houses a lift. I think now we have to like cut the wires. You must have opened the controls with quite a bit of force. The front panel is jammed open. You can't operate the lift from here anymore. Okay, so now we go in to our inventory and use that. Uh, oh, how do we do this? The wire, that's what we want. We want to cut the wire. Taking the wire in one hand, you use a knife to cut 
uh, in two, there's no visible effect, but you assume that the lift can't be called from any other floor now. Okay, now if we use the railing. Wait, there's a way to get up. Oh, here we go, the handle. In the ceiling of the lift, you notice a small, like how, this, I think this part is where it'd be hard, like as a kid, if I was playing this adventure game with like no hints, it'd be hard to figure this part out. Safe in the knowledge the lift is not going to move, you stand on the tiptoe, because the thing is like that thing was so tiny, it was like three pixels. I don't know if I ever would have noticed that it was a thing. Anyway, the hatch opens slowly, you gaze upwards into the lift shaft, placing your foot on the railing as you hoist yourself into the roof. And we need a new disc. But uh, yeah, I mean, all things considered, I think the puzzles in this game are a little more straightforward than what you'd find in like a Sierra adventure game. Like if I was trying to get on top of an elevator in a Sierra adventure game, I would need like a cantaloupe, a, a hamster, and like a, a, some rope, you know? Like you'd need really weird objects to make anything uh, happen. Um, and I think this next part is really where the stuff's gonna go down, so we're gonna save our game one more time before we proceed here. All right, Killin' Crane. We're gonna go ahead and make a make an example of him. I guess he was one of the, like, seven evils or something like that, I guess, that is somehow putting the dream web at risk. I, I don't fully get it. I probably missed some key part of the story, but I'm pretty sure we're going in to straight-up kill this guy. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what we're here to do. All right, so we're going to use our battle axe. As you place the tip of the axe between the two doors, as you push the doors, move apart slightly, you twist the axe with one side and the doors... Look at the doors open is the gist of it. Oh, there, look at that sweet animation. Oh, that is really cool. That is so neat. All right, what are we going to find inside? What are we going to find? We're going to find that, that fool David Crane. We're going to butcher him with the axe, I guess. Um, oh god! Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Wait! Uh, inventory! Uh, wait, what do we do? Oh god! <laughs> Got shot! Okay. Uh, wait, uh, alright. So there's, we died. That's how you die in this game. The remaining powers of the Dreamweb have united, destroying the Keepers. This has brought evil and chaos through the Dreamweb. All because of us. Evil that has been channeled down uh, to the thoughts and dreams of the human race. So because we didn't kill a pop singer, the whole world ended. The whole world ended. Okay, so let's, let's end this and let's actually like load up. Load things up again. Alright, disc operations load. Go back to killing Crane and restore the game. Okay, so what did we do wrong? We did not shoot that guy. I was num error number one. The guy pulled a gun on us, and we did nothing. We just stood there, kind of, frankly. Um, I'm not sure how to kill him, though, is the problem. And so that is where the clunky controls kind of come to play. So I, the controls so far have been okay when there's no like time pressure to act, but now that uh, if we don't act, we're gonna die. Now I'm feeling the pressure of clunky controls. How the hell do we shoot that guy? Okay, so first off, we know that uh, we just go in here with our ax. Um, use it. There we go. So using the ax to open the doors is not a big problem. But now, Okay, I think I, I think I know what we can do. Let's try this. I'm gonna use the gun first to kill the guy who draws his gun on us. And then I guess I'll just use it again, really. Whoa, no! Okay, open inventory. Take the gun, use it. You reach into your coat and take hold of the gun. Oh, what the? <laughs> Was I not fast enough? Okay, blah, blah, blah. The dream web dies. Okay, my hints are saying to use the axe first. So maybe I have to like deflect the shot. Maybe he shoots and I deflect it into his buddy and then I use my gun and I kill him. Thank God for hints from the internet. We'd never make it to that full frontal nudity. <laughs> I have no idea how close or far we are to that, but uh, I hope close. 
All right, use the axe. Easy. That part's easy. I love the animation in this, though. The animation is totally awesome. Okay, so that guy draws his gun. We're going to use the axe. That's move number one. It's like a game of chess with these guys. Okay, here we go. Whoa, he's like, oh, get on the ground, punk. Get on the ground right now. And I'm like, yeah, how about... You take the axe in both hands and take a swing at the guard sat by the pool. hey -o. Oh, and I... Oh, God. Okay, open my inventory and use my gun. You reach into your coat and take a hold of the gun. I dodged that first shot. Kaboom! Kablamo! <laughs> All right, we did it. Success. Can I take my... My uh, axe back. The body of Crane's guard lies with his feet dangling in the pool. Your axe remains embedded in his chest and blood seeps. I guess that that uh, axe is not coming back. You can't bring yourself to remove the axe. Right, the axe is gone. Um, walk to Lilo. Examine Lilo. A bizarre purple blow up Lilo bobs up and down, uh, sickeningly in the pool. One. What is a Lilo? Hmm. Let's check out this guy. Check his pockets for money. Cost me 800 bucks to get this hotel room. Um, you find nothing. He had a gun. Can I take the gun at least? All right, having just assassinated these two guards, let's go and uh, give Mr. Crane what's for. Um, so this is his penthouse suite. It's much nicer than my suite that they gave me. I'm sure he's paying more than 800 credits though, but... Uh, Keep in mind, I am living on a fired bartender's salary, so there's not too much, uh, not too much that uh, we can afford. Oh my! Okay, there's your, uh, there's your full frontal, I guess. Oh, <laughs> yikes! Oh man, uh, I feel bad, dude. But uh, we're gonna kill you now. Your hand shakes as you take aim and pull the trigger. That's like a cold-blooded Terminator-style assassination. Oh, God. Oh, what the heck? The orb of light. So he was evil after all. I'm glad I didn't just kill an innocent person. There's a... Oh, and I got beamed with the light myself. What the hell happened? That girl under the bed must be terrified. Terrified. The Terminator just showed up, killed her man. She's like huddled under the bed naked. <laughs> Poor woman. All right, we have inserted the disc. What will transpire now that we have been beamed away by the spirits of old? What is that purple splotch on the ground there, too? Maybe I don't want to know. Oh, maybe it's the, the girl's, like, dress or whatever. I thought it was, like, a splotch of, like, spilled something that maybe I didn't want to know about. Whoa, here we go. Cutscene time. They're summoning me through the dream web. Oh, my God. When, it, when a gang of ancient monks summons you from beyond space and time you listen let's see what they have to tell me give me your wisdom ancient ones or say nothing this is super awkward oh i'm supposed to talk to him oh i thought this was a total cutscene. all right keeper tell me stuff the keeper of the dream web stands before you with his head bowed and his hands clasped together in front of him his robe hangs heavily from him and you can barely make out face beneath the hood Ryan, your path has been chosen. I know, it has begun. The power released from the human crane has entered the dream web. His life energy must be consumed by the web. Use the key of the ancestors to unlock the power. We have a long way to go. The remaining six are becoming stronger. I can feel him. They are recruiting more followers, becoming stronger and joining forces. Who will be next? His name is Sterling. He commands the largest... Hey, S Sterling, didn't I meet that guy? The largest armed forces. Doesn't he run a pool hall in, like, South Brooklyn? Uh, the great position of power must be destroyed. I know what I must do. All right, we're going to be assassinating another guy. This, this is like... I feel like I'm in a cult. I'm in some kind of Terminator cult. They're convincing me to kill. They're just straight up selling it. I'm just a straight up murderer. murderer. I am the Terminator. This is the game. It's called Dreamweb, but you actually play as... Uh, uh, Terminator. Sure, I guess I guess that's fine though. Uh, let's see. Walk to the door. Can I leave for any of these? I cannot. Wait, where do I go? Down here. Stone floor door. Um. Okay, we can leave here. Wait, do I want these orbs? 
Can I take these orbs? Examine the orb. Above your head in the center of the room is a clear suspended orb. Can I use it? The orb is too high to reach. All right, well, whatever. Uh, it doesn't look like there's too much else of... Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, what was that? It said crystal. Lock to the vines. You see that? Oh, look. Crystal. I want that. Might be valuable someday. Um, as you hold the crystal in your hand, it glows strong purple color. It's an infinity stone. Oh, I'm totally taking that. Uh, let's use it, too. Now is not the time uh, to use the crystal. Okay, so we have a, a magical crystal. Things are getting medieval all of a sudden. I feel like I'm in Ultima. Uh, tiled floor. Nothing. Okay, where do I... How do I leave? Guys, I appreciate being... I guess maybe I go back through the dream web. Let's just see what's over here. I appreciate you guys summoning me, but... I gotta go home, man. Use the door. You place your hands on the door. Wow, wow, wow. Nothing happens. Wait, were there doors on the other side too? Okay, there are doors. So hold on, use the door. Does this one go anywhere? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It totally does. Now we are in a more secret room. I thought these guys wanted me to go and continue my mission. There is a plinth. What is a plinth? A stone plinth that stands about four feet high. You have not clarified what a plinth is. Here's a plinth. It is a good looking plinth. This plinth can be used for many things. Um, all right, I have a secret and ancient key. I'm pretty sure that goes in the plinth. Doo doo, internet hints helping me here. Enter the key to the plinth. The plinth will solve all your worries. All your wildest fantasies will come true. Oh, God. As long as those include falling into an endless pit. As long as that is your fantasy, then the plinth has you covered. Okay, so we got sucked into the abyss. Where will the abyss lead us? Hopefully back into the cyberpunk future. Because the past is strange and deeply disturbing. It is a, it is a scary place of robed figures darkness. Oh, there we go. We have traveled back into the side. Oh, we just beamed ourselves into a, a, a gross, disgusting alley. Ah, rubbish. Rubbish, dirt, and filth. I feel like I'm back at home again. Well, no sense in lying about this random alley forever. I guess we leave? Where are we? The alleyway entrance. I wonder if that's like a secret door. That random, dirty, bum alley is a secret door into the, uh, yeah, the alleyway. It's become a destination for us. It's a secret world of magic, the dream web. Anyway, we have been playing this game for quite a while, um, and I did say at the beginning of the video that I wanted to play till we saw the full frontal nudity. Because this game, I mean, this game, you know, has violence, it has blood, it has swearing, it has nudity. Um, we did see people engaged in a sexual act, so I feel like that's uh, close enough. I feel like we've seen a lot this game has to offer, and uh, I'm, I'm on the fence about whether I'm going to do a follow-up video. I'm kind of 50-50, so I guess we'll see. It will be a surprise for you guys. But this has been DreamWeb. Perhaps uh, I will be following this up by a second half where we complete this gentleman's quest here. Um, or perhaps this is as far as we ever get with DreamWeb. But uh, what do you guys think of DreamWeb here? Does it look like a cool cyberpunk adventure game? Does Is it hardcore enough for you? Is it exciting and interesting? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you have any memories of this game, if you played this game back in the day, please share those. Let us know what it was like. Let us know your favorite part of the game and what you think makes it super cool. Um, and if you didn't play this game, just did you have fun today? Well, was today interesting? Uh, no matter what the case, I hope you guys did have fun. I hope today was interesting, and I hope you will tune back in soon for more retro gaming content, um, especially my main series as I continue working on my quest to play through uh, all the games in that book, the Thousand One Games Just Play Before You Die book. Anyway, until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and uh, from the deep, dark cyberpunk future, this is Gaming J saying peace.